Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. There is some sweet relief tonight for the agricultural industry, with the state government securing up to 700 Pacific Island seasonal workers. The foreign fruit pickers will help to fill the large gap left by COVID as the sector heads into its busy summer season. The first crop of ripe strawberries and workers. The guys behind us are in, their, in our first sort of training group for the season. Hillwood Berries is one of dozens of Tasmanian farms relying on local fruit pickers this summer. We've had about a 400% increase on previous years, so the, the local uh, employment drive has really helped uh, increase that, that, that interest. That was our objective, to get the number of Tasmanians involved in the industry up. We expect that to be some double, so it'll go from some 3,000 last year to some 6,000 this year. But that's not the only good news. We'll be providing support for an estimated 700 Pacific Island uh, workers to also uh, work in Tasmania. All overseas seasonal workers will have to undertake two weeks of hotel quarantine at the expense of the state government. It's expected they'll arrive in time for the busy December picking period. This announcement today has also given us some hope that we'll be able to get our crops picked but there's still the process to work through but at least that's been a lot clearer. Tasmania's borders are also said to be bolstered with the government announcing $6 million towards continuing biosecurity and COVID screening measures at our air and seaports. As part of the funding, additional staff will be trained up. We've had to put on extra staff to actually look after the COVID response and we've determined that six to seven staff is what we need to ensure the efficiency and the streamlining of the actual processing. Monceston Airport will also undergo a $10 million upgrade with the project to be jointly funded by the government and airport owners. We'll see a new check-in area with new technologies like automated bag drops, so there's less touch points um, through the process. It'll see a new security screening area. It'll see this arrivals hall extended by about 600 square metres and it will see a new air freight facility built on the precinct. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. And a special mercy flights carrying 450 Australians stranded overseas are set to begin touching down within the next two weeks here. The Premier says final negotiations are underway with quarantine hotels, but private security will not be used. We will have um, two separate standalone hotels for international um, travellers. Obviously, uh, police uh, and the ADF will provide the security arrangements um, at those hotels. While discussions are continuing with an airline for flights from Hobart to New Zealand, the Premier has confirmed positions for Border Force and Federal Police officers for those flights will initially be filled by fly-in, fly-out workers. The Small Business Hardship Grants controversy continues with the Greens aiming to spark an Integrity Commission investigation into potential misconduct. Cassie O'Connor says the party sent the request after the government refused to release details of recipients of the $26 million scheme. We believe that the government and the minister have acted improperly and that this is a matter the Integrity Commission should examine. The Premier says he welcomes any investigation, but he's received advice it wouldn't be in the recipient's best interest to release the information. TT Line's fight to review a raft of charges against the company has been dismissed in the Supreme Court in Hobart. The spirit of Tasmania's operator has pleaded not guilty over the deaths of 16 polo ponies it transported in 2018. Tasmania's prime vessel for transport, also the scene of mysterious pony deaths. Nearly three years on, 29 charges still remain against TT Line, relating to 16 polo ponies who died on board while travelling from Devonport to Victoria in January 2018. The liner pleading not guilty to all charges. The animals, previously valued at around $640,000, had competed just days earlier at the Barn Bugle Polo in Tasmania's northeast. It's been previously alleged the company did not provide adequate airflow and ventilation during the transit, as well as failing to provide a safe environment and inspection routines. In March, TT Line submitted a push in court to review the charges, arguing some regulations didn't apply. Those submissions dismissed today, with the Chief Justice saying it has delayed a hearing by months, with a date still yet to be set. 
In conclusion, Chief Justice Alan Blow said it is in the public interest that the charges in the magistrate's court be heard and determined with as little further delay as possible. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. A 42-year-old woman has been arrested, charged and refused bail after she allegedly struck a 70-year-old man in a violent home invasion a fortnight ago. Alicia Prentice is accused of assaulting the Longford man to the point where he required hospital treatment before stealing cash from the residence. Ms Prentice appeared in the Launceston Magistrates Court this afternoon after being charged overnight. She is due to enter a plea next month. A four-year-old boy has drowned in a tragic incident at Bridgewater. The child was located unresponsive in an above-ground pool in the front yard of his home on Saturday. Emergency services arrived at the property around 4.30, but he was unable to be revived. Police say it's a reminder of the importance of ensuring pools are safe for children. A fundraising page has been set up to assist the family with funeral costs. New figures reveal Tasmanians are building the smallest new homes in the country. The report from Comsec finds the average size of a new Tasmanian home is around 50 square metres smaller than the national average. Tasmania is also the only state or territory where the size of new dwellings, including apartments, shrunk from last year. Nationally, homes are getting bigger, with Australians having the second largest in the world behind the United States. The Workers' Union has raised concerns apprentices could be spending less time on the tools under a new federal proposal. A national committee has recommended the mandatory amount of on-the-job training be scrapped, but there has been calls for Tasmania's Trade Minister to rule out that change with concerns that will lead to more time in the classroom. I understand how important it is for apprentices to get on-the-job training, some workplace practice, uh, in a workplace and what the Australian Industry Skills Committee are, are proposing is that no longer be mandated. They should not under any circumstances endorse something which will fundamentally undermine the training and apprenticeship system in Tasmania. The state government says there is no plan to change Tasmania's training, recognising it's a critical element to students' education. The state's peak motoring body has released new data to help Tasmanians choose wisely when buying a car. Revealing the total operating costs of a Kia Cerato are the cheapest in the small car category, averaging around $182 a week, while SUVs in general are 10% more expensive than comparable non-SUVs. The RACT says buyers should consider all the costs. Our insurance, our fuel, our servicing and our tyres, but it's the costs like depreciation uh, over the life of a vehicle. The vehicles were assessed in several categories over a five-year period. Tasmanians will commemorate those who fought in battle this Wednesday for Remembrance Day. But the Day of Memorial will be a little different this year, with the state's RSL electing not to have a public service. Vietnam vet Brian McKenzie says that he celebrates Remembrance Day every day. However, November 11 is the most important one. It's a, it's a day where, personally, I remember mates that didn't go home during, during the Vietnam War. The pandemic means this year's commemorations will be like no other, but our soldiers will still be honoured. And I think at the end of the day, we, uh, we need, to, need to remember people that, in particular, give their lives for their country. The RSL of Tasmania won't be holding a public service for Remembrance Day this year. Well, the big thing this year which is restricting us with Remembrance Day is the fact that we've still got COVID-19 restrictions applying. Official guests and representatives from ex-service organisations are invited and an online service will be available for the public. It'll be available to anybody and will be available in most RSLs. We'll be streaming the event as well. For those who can't get there, a simple request. Well, what we ask of people is like Anzac Day, which, as you know, was also restricted this year, is to stop and remember. And just, you know, one minute silence, that's all we ask of people at 11 o'clock on the day. A moment to pay our respects for those who fought for us. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Well, work is officially underway to transform the Derwent Entertainment Centre into the nest, head of the Tasmania Jack Jumpers' entrance into the NBL next year. The state government has completed the purchase of the deck and the adjoining land with construction beginning today. But the search is still underway for a head coach for the team. 
We are in we are in discussions with some coaches who are currently overseas, but unfortunately, with contractual arrangements with players and coaches and whatnot, it may not be possible to announce somebody who's in contract. Um, but we may actually be able to at least work behind the scenes, knowing we've got someone coming in. More than 2,000 Tasmanians have already signed up as members. The Cancer Council has announced the Relay for Life will return next year after five of the state's six events were cancelled this year. Funds from the overnight walk go towards support, treatment and care of those who have bravely fought cancer. It gets very emotional for some of them. Some people just come and just do that first one or two laps because it is about a celebration. Uh, as I said, it's a very safe event for them. They don't come here thinking they can't talk about their cancer. There are numerous ways people can start fundraising. Um, we've got a list from A to Z, all different ideas for workplaces and schools. The organisers hope to raise half a million dollars. Launcestonians are being urged to dig deep this festive season to help those in need. City Mission launching its annual Christmas appeal, helping to put food on the table and presents under the tree. We do have more demand on our services. We have uh, more demand for food, uh, for assistance with bills and just uh, some vouchers to get people through the Christmas period. The charity is calling for toy donations this year so that struggling families can make the day special for their young ones. Schools and residents around Hobart have contributed to an additional 500 tonnes of organic waste being diverted away from landfill in the past year. Lansdowne Crescent Primary is one of 11 schools currently using the council's food and garden organics bins. Students today showed off their composting skills in their kitchen garden. It's much better that our food is being used to create compost, which helps our farms really thrive. So it's um, such an important part of our zero waste uh, goal in Hobart, uh, and the community has really embraced it. This week marks one year since Hobart's curbside FOGO service was introduced. Jordan Silk has carved out a sensational century as Tasmania kept the pressure on New South Wales in their shield clash. Silk was the driving force behind Tasmania's 239 run total. Despite a horror first innings, New South Wales has injected plenty of life into the contest. Nick Larkin with a century of his own. We found out today how Jordan Silk likes to make his runs. Flicked away by Silk. This could go all the way for four, I'm sure it will. His century accumulated from 15 boundaries, more than half his total. The tonne's biggest threat, the lower order. Oh, to Siddle, who's edging and caught. Oh, he's gone again. It's high. Oh, this is going to be out. This is a terrible dismissal. Oh, that one. It's been caught. In the gully. Much like the Blues the day before, the Tigers batsman became a rabble. Jackson Bird also went cheaply, but Silk had just enough time to bring up triple figures. He punches down the ground, that'll be it. Don't bother running for that one. That is a seventh first class century for Jordan Silk. Silk would go a few overs later on 106, a total glistening on an otherwise ordinary looking scorecard for the batsman. But the Tigers' next big highlight wasn't far away. And there he's out for a duck. He's poked a one outside off stump and he's tickled one through to the keeper. Curtis Patterson followed in similar circumstances, the bird pain combination striking again. But Nick Larkin lifted the Blues, hitting the sweet spot. And there it is, he's got it. A fourth first-class century to Nick Larkin, and it's a really high-quality one too. Making the contest very much alive going into day three. Good evening, everyone. 23 in Hobart today, Launceston reaching 22, 19 in Devonport, and Burnie atop of 17. Around the state, 25 in Ouse, Grove and Strawn, 23, 21 at Friendly Beaches, Flinders and King Island both 20, and 19 in Smithton and St Helens. Patchy low cloud can be seen across the far north of the state today, while clear skies can be seen elsewhere. Further out, convective low level cloud can be seen across much of the eastern states as a cold front approaches Western Australia. Tomorrow's chart shows the high remaining over the Tasman Sea, while a cold front and associated complex area of low pressure will cross South Australia. North to northwesterly winds tomorrow, 10 to 15 knots, reaching 20 to 30 knots about the northwest and there is a strong wind warning current for the far northwest coast. Hobart 27 tomorrow, mostly sunny and 22 in Adventure Bay, 26 in Taralea. Partly cloudy and 26 in Launceston, Devonport 20, 21 and mostly sunny in Bridport. 
Burnie reaching 20 degrees tomorrow, sunny and 27 in Strawn, 21 in Marawar. And in the east, partly cloudy and 22 degrees in St Helens, Swansea 25 and 21 in Whitemark. And the UV tomorrow is very high across the state. Looking on to Wednesday now, showers developing about the west and the northwest in the afternoon. Showers contracting to the north, west and far south on Thursday. And on Friday, showers also contracting to the northwest and far south. 20 in Perth tomorrow, Adelaide reaching 36, mostly sunny in Melbourne and Sydney, and partly cloudy and 26 in Brisbane. And currently Hobart, mostly sunny and 21, 18 and mostly sunny in, in Launceston, and Devonport, partly cloudy and 16. And that's all the weather tonight, Kim. Thank you very much, Chelsea. And that is the news for this Monday. Have a great night. And on behalf of the team, good night.